Okay, greetings in the name of the Most High. I went on and on about audio for the last four and a half minutes, and I decided that that wouldn't be a good way to start. Let me start with this. Now, I know there's some of you who want to hear about audio, but it was just a digital versus analog debate, and it, it's never really going to be ended. Uh, let's see if I can find out what I was looking for here. It is uh, the wee hours, definitely fisherman's hours, and we're trying to see if we can, and we can't get back to where we were. Uh, okay, let's see if we can this way. Okay. How are you doing? You doing well? I spent all night giving everything to God. <laughs> I spent all night, Lord, you know, the chemtrail thing, it's, it's terrible what they're doing, you know, that, uh, the terrible what all these secretive, occultic, whatever, the, someone's saying they're all occultists, they're doing the chemtrails, I, whatever they are, <clears throat> it's all done in secret, and Lord, I'm had, and, and my fellow neighbors are such dolts, they don't notice anything. I say, don't you notice that, the, you know, they, they change the climate, then they go, oh, look, it's man-made climate change. Well, they're not lying. It is man-made climate change. They're using geoengineering to create drought in the West so they can ultimately move people off the land here. That's, that's the goal of Agenda 21. I mean, if you read there. So they want to they take over, and the, you know, the best way is to have a water war. Well, Jerry Brown has got to be one of the cruelest people in the world in California. Now, I mean, it's just the next stage after this is, is a form of martial law and land confiscation, you know, house confiscation, moving people out and not having to pay them. You know, if they could just keep the pressure on with the geoengineering, they could destroy all the people in California, you know, which is the goal. And, um, I mean, the goal is drought, make no mistake. And when they do that in a certain area, then there's flooding elsewhere. So you have the East Coast that gets, you know, flooded. And that's a, that, sure, it's man-made. It's being done on purpose by the military. And um, they just keep flying these planes and, and, and torturing their own people. Be wonderful to be a chemtrail pilot. I mean, how could one even live without, I mean, you know, what kind of, you know, uh, I can't even come up with a name of how low these people really are. But you find that in the military, the more and more stories that come out, the more, the more across the board and these agencies and these um, DEA now and, and all these, you, you find out what kind of scum they've recruited into these things. So now, you know, the inmates are running the asylum. I mean, you have probably, it used to be qualitatively, you'd have the best and the brightest and those people of moral fiber, moral character, but now you have immorality and um, no character base because they've all run after the devil. You know, you run after the devil, you have the, you have the orgies, you have the immorality, you have the lying, you have all that. So if that's what they're doing, they, they hate Christians, they hate, they'll, they'll hate libertarians, hate constitutionalists, they'll hate anyone like that if they've gone the other way. So my conclusion about what they've done is they've officially just gone the other way and um, my prediction about losing every war they get involved in, it's so funny, it's so ironic how, how pathetic the U.S. military is that they now fight themselves. <laughs> I never thought I would see the day when I would see the U.S. military fighting itself and calling it good. And if you notice it, they want to court-martial you, right? If you mention that there might be something wrong with immorality, with Satan worship, with the uh, plant or orgies or whatever kind of thing they got going on there. I wouldn't be surprised if they start building temples and things out in the woods, you know, so they can uh, sacrifice their animals or whatever it is they want to do, do and have these, uh, these unholy satanic holidays where they celebrate everything, these old pagan holidays. I wouldn't be surprised if they get to that point, but do not expect People, if that's what you want, if you think you're so damn smart and you want to have a military like that to defend you and to defend the homeland, I hope you understand. They, they, not only do they not defend you, they have turned on you. They're a rogue outfit in it for themselves. 
And, you know, you may pay their salary, but to hell with you because I got no morals because I embrace Satan. Right? So the more I can screw you, the more up the ladder I go. A2 Brute, you know? I mean, that's basically the satanic way, isn't it? You betray the one closest to who never thought you'd betray them, and that's the most delicious thing of a satanic ritual that there is. You bet. I know exactly how they roll. And um, all I can say is, you think you can beat God, U.S. military? I got news for you. Now, not only do you lose every war you ever get involved in, case in point, okay, Iraq, Afghanistan, uh, the list, the, the, Libya, uh, Egypt with the social engineering there. Uh, what, where else do we have influence where we got our ass kicked? Oh, Iran. Way to go. So I wonder what kind of people are being recruited. What, what, who are the top brass in the U.S. military? Would they all think that they're smart going to be Muslim or this Brennan guy, he became a Muslim. He only did that for political correctness to enhance his, his uh, career. He doesn't believe in anything. You know, he believes in himself. He, he is God. It's proven by the fact that Michael Hastings was going to do an article on him, and guess what? Michael Hastings just blew up. Guess that article never surfaced. It should have surfaced anyway, but it just didn't. My goodness, isn't that a nice person? So, you know, the reason they want to crack, and then on top of it, you got Obama, the dolt of dolts, the most infantile president, even more infantile than, than Richard Nixon, who was, I didn't think a, a grown man could be that much of a baby, but a, apparently he was. And, and um, I, I think Obama tops the list of being a, you know, a petulant man-child. And, you know, he's got to go do a, he completely gives Iran everything they want in a negotiation. And then he, he gets out there and, and takes a victory lap thinking, do, I mean, do people see this circus going on? People have got to be laughing at him hysterically. It just, it just, it just, it, it, a deal, any deal, just to show he's, he's being presidential, he got a deal. Well, yeah, if I give you everything, if I say, come on into this country, I'll give you money, transportation, I'll take care of your kids and everything else, then I, made a, then I go out and take a victory lap of being a great achievement for immigration, um, where I just gave away the store and sold my own constituents down the river. I mean, the biggest dolts on earth, <clears throat> beyond a guy like Obama, are his supporters, who I've made the decision not to involve them in my life anymore because there's no reason to. You know, there's, if they're that stupid, if they're that, you know, immoral, it's really the only word I can come up with. After now that everything has happened and everything has come out in the wash and everything is, is pretty much fake, and like, like, you know, taking the victory lap, it's like Disneyland, right? It's, it's like, yeah, in his own mind, in his own fantasy world, he's a big hero. But to the people that still support him, the 40% or so that have stuck with him, um, I, ha I have had to make a life decision to not involve them or not be involved with people uh, such as that. Because I fe and I'll tell you why. Because in spiritual warfare, they are, have already made their mind up what side they're on. I mean, obviously, right? But they're also very dangerous people because they're easily manipulated. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm a fan of free thinkers and I'm, you know, the other thing is I know I don't have all that many years left, <laughs> thank God. And um, so I want to, um, you know, surround myself with, with you know, and, and interact with people who are themselves free thinkers or, and, and give a lot of this a lot of thought. Because it's, this is no game, okay, and, and I'm going to get serious now. I have kind of a jocular tone on a Friday, you know, I know that, um, I, I, you know, I start with the chemtrails, I wind up with Obama. I, I didn't want to give him any, you know, more press because I, I'm ashamed uh, of the, our president. Um, you know, such a great opportunity to have a, you know, a first president of color, if you will, if that's a big hurdle for our country to, to heal and, and look what it turned into. I mean, <laughs> I, I just, I have really very little respect for people that want to behave in that manner, you know. 
who want to use the power of the presidency to you know, divide and cause race riots or whatever else they do. I really don't respect that. I mean, healing, yes, but, but what, what it was used for, selfishness, uh, ridiculous selfishness, um, spending the people's money on these lavish vacations while the people are hurting and suffering. I have no respect for that, okay? And no, I would not allow this people like that around me because I, you know, I, I, I value uh, morals. I mean, I do value, you know, I'm not the most perfect person, but I want to strive to be better. And I don't want to be around people like that who tr just, you know, do the wrong thing every time or lie every time they speak. I, you know, it shows, um, you know, definitely demonic possession, obviously. I mean, that, that's, you know, a no-brainer on that. I mean, it, I wouldn't even debate that with anyone. That's, that's just basic. Um, when you have people that so easily lie and, they, and then they make stuff up and start doing victory laps and things, you, you're dealing with, you know, not just infantilism, but you're dealing with psychopathology, you know, and that's, you're dealing with, you know, more specifically someone that was groomed, trained, trauma-based mind control, whatever they use to, to create this, this, whatever this is. And um, I, I think, you know, the same, you know, the, the, the same thing could apply to uh, all the presidents, really, you know, seem to be uh, under control of something else, not themselves, obviously. Now, I don't blame them, okay? I don't blame these people. I forgive, you know, I forgive Obama and the rest of them, even though they cause a great deal of pain for humanity, you know, they, they, they're not, they don't help at all. But I, I do, you know, forgive and, uh, I'm, and I pray for, uh, you know, to have a better representative in the future that, that we would somehow get back on track. And, you know, now that we see how ridiculous, and the U.S. military is now infantile. I mean, if they're going to support, you know, um, the whole pagan way and, and all these, uh, you know, and, and, and prosecute even court martial Christians, um, then I have no respect. And that brings me to the other topic, and, and I, you know, the Christians. The idea of, you know, and, and you now, you see the whole gay thing. Hey, you gays who listen in, and I know there's a few of you, and I know, I know you're on the path, but I'm just saying, if there's anyone else out there that hears this, do you see my prediction about being a political tool because of the big, turning the gay thing into a political tool? You see that? You see what's happening? That's right, through these single issues, the political, the PC police become totalitarian, takes freedom away from all of us, including you. What do you think about that? I told you not to label yourself a sex act. I told you not to be used as a useful idiot. I told you to stay out of there for your own soul's sake. Because you see, you become a battering ram of Satan because Satan is the totalitarian, right? You don't prosecute Christians unless you are a Satanist. It's only Satanists that have an issue with Christians. I mean, for example, you look at Muslims, the people that are cutting the Christians' heads off are not Muslims, they're Satanists. It's that simple. Why can't, I don't care what they label themselves. They are not of God, obviously, because they're persecuting, you know, people that they know are of God. And they, and they admit it. So this is a war against God. So that would be Satan. Okay, I, I, I rest my case, Your Honor. My God, there's no debate about this. I mean, we have to be able to talk here at the Zeph Report about basic tenets that we agree upon and stop debating it. Everything is not subject to debate. Everything is not subject to debate around here. For example, geoengineering is not subject to debate. It's whether or not, um, you know, I know most of the country is uh, a brain-dead moron. I understand that. Probably some of it from the, what they're spraying. Look, I looked up in the sky yesterday, and it was red, blue, and green um, tinge on the on the on the spray, and it was blowing over from uh, Arizona. Obviously, it was a big wind, 
And I never seen that many colors, that really bright colors in the sky of, of chemicals. And I'm just I'm wondering if they're dropping something new. And I find this, you know, the only people that would be doing this is the United States government doing it to its own people. I just can't imagine that you put them on talk shows and have these people go on about how they're trying to help. My God, are you that suicidal? Um, I can't imagine the U.S. media, how, how, you know, Fox News included, how in bed all these people are while we destroy ourselves, while we fight within, because that's the way Obama rolls. I mean, not, all this came about during his tenure. He brought the entire tossing out of the military morals, all the morals of the military, you know, honor, God, country, all that got thrown out because of Obama. I mean, obviously, he's working for the other side as well. You know, he's working for the enemy. Well, when they work for the other side, they become the enemy of their own people. They're in it for themselves. They're selfish bastards. And they're psycho. So, you, you know, they're, they're, they're um, unstable in all their ways. When they announced that they became a Muslim, it just means to me they bought a ticket to Disney World. You know, that's, that's all that means. You know what I mean? They just, that means they want to make sure their pension is there. And, you know, it, it's just, it's a, it's a, it's a, you know, it's another sellout thing. So it, it's, it's, it's just terrible. Now, I understand that Islam is an old religion and there is the, the aspect of Islam that's a formal structural religion like Judaism, like Christianity. The problem that you have with the organized religions is stated here numerously, so we don't have to go into that. And that's beyond debate. I mean, I think we understand there's corruption you know, in the government, there's corruption in the uh, religion, there's corruption in uh, corporate institutions, there's corruption wherever there's man, there's corruption. The idea is not to give in to it and yield to it. The idea is to fight against it within ourselves and make ourselves better people so that we can have a better society. I mean, it's that simple. But when you start teaching kids to lie and you start, you know, turning them into perverts at five years old or whatnot and sexualizing them and then teaching them to serve the adults, um, you know, which I never thought in all my years, I never thought we would stoop that low to bring the mainstream what was something that I thought was when I came out on the internet and I was, you know, um, exposing Satanism and corruption, you know, just basically having to kind of pick up the mantle of preaching in a way because the, the pulpits fell on their asses and so they couldn't do anything about God. So I took to the, to the, you know, to the airway, to the opportunity that was presented with the internet to be able to, 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 do the, the, to do the job that they failed to do. And, you know, I learned over the years that, it, you know, it didn't do much good. I mean, you know, it, it, it helped the people that it helped, but I'm saying uh, it didn't change the world. And then I understand why. I mean, after you look at the world, you realize that, you know, most men, most humans seem to like Disney World and they want to live in darkness and they don't want the light. That's what I had. I, that's a hard one to wake up to. And that God has already ordained that. And that's even harder to wake up to that. To having God involved in things of light and dark, um, and that goes against church doctrine, so it goes against Christianity, so I'm not really a Christian because that, that doctrine and the doctrine of original sin I reject, and so I, uh, therefore I'm you know, a lousy, I mean, I would be a bad Christian at best. But I don't buy, the, the whole thing of Adam and Eve is very deep and it, it deals with, with physics, and I, I'm just not gonna put it on the level of the mundane as the churches do and just say, Guilt, 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 and, you know, torture, 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 and God's going to punish every generation from Adam on because Adam fell, and that doesn't hold water with me. It doesn't, it's not even logical, and I'm not going to buy it, okay? So right there, so, so I, I don't need to be around those people, okay, so because they believe, and the rapture, of course, is the icing on the cake, the, the total delusion, and then we get to my topic today, which is end times mind control programming, end times MK, now, you've heard about, um, you know, I've interviewed people that say they went through the Monarch program and different, different MK Ultra, and then I knew people that were directly under Dr. Green, you know, and um, in one case, it was really pretty bizarre. I mean, I mean 
It's so bizarre. I can't even. I, I can. It's so supernatural and bizarre. I can't even uh, deal with it right now. <laughs> so, you know. But all of that, Doctor Green and Gottlieb and these various people and mind control and all this stuff. Um, you know, I've known at my age. I've known people that have been, you know, as children put through that. And um, that's a. It's a terrible thing. But it's a lot more widespread than, than just these little doctors and the famous Dr. Green and the whole Mengele thing and all that. I've, I've dealt with those people, those survivors, for years, and I've dealt with people under that kind of mind control, gang stalking, um, all, all kinds of things that, that are all tied in with, with that, and it's also tied in with the supernatural. There's a door there, and on the other side of that door, there are people controlling it, but they're not human, okay? So that's why I've, I've stayed away from that topic because it seems the gang stalking people and the MK people, they seem to both not want to go where I, where, what I, I can see, see what I see. They don't want to see it. They want to deal with it in a terrestrial manner and it's not, sub, it's not subject to a terrestrial man. The whole thing you're dealing with is, is, is magical realms and other realms and other worlds and using consciousness to create world and aliens and all. It goes to all, to all that, okay? And that's, very multidimensional. It's very, very hard to, to to get your mind around it. It's it's very, very difficult to see the interaction between human and the real world, which is on the other side of that door. Okay, this is the Truman Show world here. Okay, they manipulate this world from the other side of that door, and that includes your gang stalking. Do you realize? And I know there's specific MK people who have been tortured, and they use they 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 always do two things. You know, the sleep deprivation, drugs, and everything else, and lots of sex, especially sex you wouldn't want to go along with, you know, forced sex. And then, you know, turning people into robots and then having them obey. And um, this has been going on for a long time, but this is only a very small piece of the puzzle because, you see, what they learned how to do is they learned how to trauma-based mind control, i.e. hypnotize, uh, masses of the population, which is what happened to America. So the, the purpose of something like 9-11, for example, 9-1-1, you know, 9-11, the whole purpose of it is, is a PSYOP, but what they used it for was a trauma-based control programming because you see the people don't accept the truth about it. They accept the narrative, whatever the narrative is. I don't even know what, what kind of, you know, sort of, you know, fantasy these people have cooked up, but whatever the official narrative is, they believe and they go on with their lives, and they really do believe it because they really are controlled. They really are mind controlled. And then when they see something different, they say, "Oh, extreme right wing tinfoil hat," and vilify them. So that's also part of the mind control. So these are trauma-based mind control victims. You don't need to look into different quarters. Just look on television. There they all are. Right? They wouldn't let them out there unless they were under control. And this control is global. And it comes from another dimension. And it's, it's you know, um, the social engineers, everyone else knows, you traumatize the population and then you offer, you know, solutions. But you have to understand, you get them to believe you. And once they believe the lie, and then, you know, you create an artificial reality around them, right? And you get them all to agree on the agreed upon reality that you've created. And then you've got them. That, that's basically the long and the short of MK programming. That's all there is to it. That's basically, right, you use trauma. Uh, I, you know, the people in California just have no clue about, you know. Now, does that mean that they're going to get their way ultimately, that these people won't wake up? No, but to wake up, look what they would have to do. They, I have been grappling with this for a long time. To really wake up, all right, what people would have to do to see what it really is, is so much of a paradigm shift that I don't think most people could handle it. I think they would go insane. If people had to know what I, I don't even look, again, I look away from the news. I don't want to know. You know, I, I, I may, it may be cruel, and it doesn't mean I don't care. You know, it doesn't mean that, but you have to understand, it, the, 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 because of the paradigm being wrong, um, you know, you're going to have nothing but corruption and, and pain and suffering for people worldwide at the hands of, you know, whoever. 
The elites aren't really even that responsible. They're controlled. You have to understand they're totally controlled. Now you look at the, the idea of, of this Obama guy doing a victory lap and then the news media giving him a pass, that is beyond, that, that's actually in the realm of complete insanity. That's actually um, unhealthy mental illness. But if everyone's mentally ill, then it doesn't matter, you see. And if it's all under control by these little doctors and these aliens and stuff, and they're all controlling it like a laboratory, but who cares? It's just an ant farm anyway. So it's very hard, you know, to find conversation, uh, to find people that, that understand. And I find people in, in, in the military industrial complex who understand. And then they're, they're like, they think I'm, you know, one guy thought I was in the NSA because I knew all this stuff. And he was like, uh, you know, he's goes, well, you've got to be in if you didn't know all that. And I said, no, I've, you know, I did my homework, did my research and, you know, talked to people. I know people who are connected in. And, and yes, I was able to piece it all together. It took me a number of years to, to, to piece literal reality together, but it, I, I did it. The unfortunate thing, though, about piecing it all together, and I've been on that mission since I was a teenager, so, because I really want to know what was wrong, you know? I really just suffered so much, I just needed to know what was wrong, you know? And, and even testimony from my friends saying that you were a very troubled child, I was like, wow. It's very troubled. Well, of course I was troubled by the world. And so, instead of just giving up and winding up being a victim of, of the whole thing, I, I had to fight and l learn what it was all about. And the more I found out, the more I was told I didn't know anything. So that was kind of a clue. That kind of clued me in the, you mean the more that I learn, the more I don't know anything? And it's like, well, they're never gonna let you know everything. They're never going to let you know what I know, for example, is what you hear people who are, who've been initiated into it. They go, you're never going to know what I know. What, you mean like cocktail parties on the, uh, on the UFOs? Which, which abduct children and then the children's your whole thing, right? Yeah, children, you know, even when they're putting up the, the kind of fake circusy Baphomet thing in Tulsa, notice they had the two kids there at the foot of Baphomet. Okay. It's always the children, you see, with these satanic assholes. It's always the children. So what you're looking at now, um, gay people, is this. You're looking at totalitarianism uh, in your name, and you own it. And uh, one day you'll become a human being, but right now you are, are gay. You are an act of some sort of sex. And who gives a damn? And I, I have to turn away from the, uh, from the thing about, you know, uh, but I accept this, you know, um, the, the, this idea of this, this, you know, insane hatred, death threats to a Christian family that wouldn't want to run a pizza place, that's about the lowest you could sink. And this is about where I depart company. Because, um, if you're going to be part of the totalitarianism and the military takeover and all that stuff, I don't really have time for you. You know, you, you, you're so deluded that you're, you're, you're so beyond help that I feel very sorry for you, but you, you might as well just put on a Nazi uniform today. You know, if I, look, I always tell this story. Okay, so my gay friend is a photographer. He only photographs gay weddings. That's his specialty. Okay, he uh, refuses uh, straight weddings because it's not his specialty. It's not, and he refers them on to someone else. Nobody is ever going to bother him ever for that discrimination because he's leading his own life. His business really focuses on gay weddings, which is his right and which is fine. Okay, that's the. If you look at it that way, then you'll understand the whole point. This political correctness that especially, you know, uh, these various groups, I guess there's this ethnic aspect, there's the Muslim aspect, there's the gay aspect, you're all lumped together, congratulations, um, ends up in totalitarianism and no freedom for anyone, including any of the aforementioned groups. And when, when we have 
people acting like babies in a sandbox, throwing crap at each other, which is what we had in Indiana. I, I, I'm, beyond, I'm beyond the beyond here. I'm, I'm, you know, I just, I'm so embarrassed for this country and for these people and for this idiot Tim Cook out at Apple and what a moron he turned out to be. I'm just so disgusted. But I guess people, the, the gays are so hung up about sex, so completely twisted mentally because of, uh, because they're, they, they, I, and I understand why, you know, but they refuse to acknowledge that there's a God and that there's, you know, that there's, you know, rules for living here. I don't care if you make every single person on earth do gay sex. It's never going to be normal. And people with gender issues are never going to be normal. So they, they can work it out, but they may always have that conflict. It's that, but other people don't determine whether I'm okay or not, for example. You know, I'm all right. Um, I may have this or that. I don't need other people to conform to this or that so that I will feel comfortable. That would be me being a uh, dictator. I, I'm not such a child that I need everyone to do what I do so that I can feel comfortable because that's the position of an infant. And that's what you have in Tim Cook, the CEO of Apple, an infant. And if we're a nation of infants, we're done. If that's what we really become, a nation of infantile crybabies, then we're done. I mean, wah, 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 I didn't get my way, I'm going to shut you down, you know. It's, 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 it's the position of children. You know, and... It's, I guess infantilism is encouraged as part of the mind control. But, you know, it's like, it, it keeps going back to the spiritual battle of Satanism, you know, because <clears throat> in Satanism, um, just like, you know, in Hollywood, for any, all, the, all the abuse that I got as a child, there was no heterosexual, it was all homosexual. Right? There were no women involved. And there never are. <laughs> so, what do you call that? Um, why do they want the children? Ding, ding, ding. Okay, could it be Satan? Could it be control? Could it be conform the whole world to your point of view? Anti-God. Do you see how the whole gay thing, how dangerous it is, how it gets used by a bigger agenda? Well, under the guise of sex education, we're teaching them. No, you're sexualizing them. You've crossed the line. Not to discriminate against gay people. Therefore, we can really have some fun with sex education, the seething pervert adult says. Now, this may have no, no, most gay people out there may have no no, zero uh, interest in converting children, but mentally converting them, you know, making people more tolerant and more accepting by taking away all their rights and all their freedoms. You know, I'm watching that. I'm, look, I'm trying not to comment on this stuff. I am trying to have a nice day. I don't want to spend my time talking to a bunch of spoiled brats like we have in, in, in politics. I don't want to have to, you know, whether they listen or not, I'm going to have to address their issues, which is a bunch of whiny crybabies screaming and yelling that they didn't get this or they didn't get that or you dissed me or that we don't have gay rights or whatever it is. I'm, I'm just sick of it. With the issues facing this world, to get up in arms about some of these issues like this, this law in Indiana, for example, um, and to, to intentionally misinterpret it and lie about it, and then having them you know, change and adapt the law to be more fair that you know, forcing Susie Cream Cheese to go out and cater the uh, event, whatever it is. Um, you know, we need more education. We need more gay weddings to get people used to it. 
Well, we also need to have killings to get people used to that. So we have to make them desensitized to having people's heads cut off. And what's wrong with that? It's part of my religion. And by what? Well, don't stop there. Let's do it all. A dumbest country on earth, country that had the most going for it, and and the most to to, to you know, the, was the, the the beam of light that was so helpful to other people at one time, turns out to be just the most despotic, embarrassing, you know, childish, infantile, um, stupid, vapid, pedantic. If this is what fighting God has gotten you, I would say turn around and go to God because obviously you've done horrible on your own. If America, this is what fighting God has gotten you, you failed. You're an embarrassment. You are, um, you've gone from the best to the worst. And the enemies who are amongst you are going to steal everything you got. They're going to steal you blind and leave you bleeding on the side of the road. They don't care about you. Well, one day you're going to wake up to understand that the people you elected, the people you trusted, didn't care. You were betrayed by everybody as part of your punishment, as part of a judgment by God. Who's like, you know, you want to fight me? You know, it's, it's, it's like this. You don't play on the freeway, right? Because you know you get run over by a car. It's just simple rules, but you have to grow up and accept them. You know, you reap what you sow. Apparently that went out, that flew right by, pew, right over their heads. And um, so now we have, uh, you know, Jade Helm, which is obviously um, a practice of rounding people up. I mean, pew, right over your head. And that means everybody that's, you know, and. Uh, I'm likening that to a, like an Agenda 21 thing. You know, the drought gets so bad that, you know, you have to start relocating people, you know. But whatever it is, it's all done on purpose and it's all done to, um, you know, it's all part of a, you know, of, of, of this long slippery slope of turning against God. And this is, you know, your military, your police, everyone turns on the citizens in a perverted society, of course, because it's the, quite the opposite in a normal society. This is not normal anymore. And um, you let people like Obama actually, you know, um, bring in all his satanic crap. And this is where, where you wind up. You know, take over the Internet, which was free and beautiful. Okay. Uh, freedom, you know, the robotics thing coming in. All these things we didn't have to go through. But no, people, they knew better. And they wanted to go do their own thing, and they wanted to tear it up in the name of selfishness, in the name of ego, and this is where we wound up. It's it's if you could just back up and look at this place from the moon or something, you just shake your head and it's the saddest thing in the world to see these people actually filled with pomp and circumstance, taking victory laps or acting like because they have brass on their. And they, they have uh, epaulets, and they sit there being a joint chief to sit there and proudly uh, speak at some event like they're some important person. When they've lost, it's like someone tell that joint chief of staff, he's lost that. You've, you've lost that, that polish. You've lost that stature, man. And the only way you're going to get it back is, I mean, we have to get it back collectively. I mean, we have to try you don't outlaw um, God, which is really when you say outlawing Christians, what you really mean is God. It really means I, I'm, I'm uh, you know, Satan owns me. I'm going to be immoral, do what I want. But then don't expect to go to an event or a commencement, you know, and, and speak like you have something to say. It's, it's the embarrassing thing is that thing is gone. That platform's been removed by consent, by the way. And so when you speak about these moral platitudes, it falls on deaf ears because it's a hypocrite speaking. Because he's already embraced the satanic way. There is no honor and decorum among Satanists. 
There is nothing to say. Go out and get killed. Lose the war. Talk to West Point. Go out and get killed. Lose the war. Do for me, but I'm not going to do for you. I mean, it's every man for himself. That, that's really the way, it, it, the way it becomes when you throw the moral compass out. It really is every man for himself and whatever desire you have should be fulfilled. And if you need to be a, a cross-dresser in the military, well, we're going to accommodate you. And feeling proud of yourselves for accomplishing that great feat, you might note that in human behavior, this, these kinds of issues have been around for the very beginning of time. And uh, so to me, it looks like what the, what the American military has done is thrown out just basically all tradition, all God and country. The founding fathers would not be welcome in today's army, today's modern military. And they have thrown themselves out into the garbage can. And they still think they're important. So they feel like, you know, you need to respect them. But, you, but that platform of respect that was earned before is no longer there today. By their own hand, not by me. I prefer to see them strong. But without God, you cannot be strong. Without morals, you can't lead an army. Just a gang of thugs then, every man for himself. How is it any different than, the, than gangs? The only saving grace of the U.S. military are really the rank and file people, you know, the lower people, the people that do the work, who get paid nothing and insulted every day. But then you turn them into the enemy. When they're returning from all these conflicts and they fought for their country, you tell, you tell them they're the enemy. You, the most the, immoral, that's completely immoral and cruel to do. And they do it, folks, because they want to take over. Because Obama and, and his, you know, the advent of Obama means that, you know, now it's their turn to rule the world or whatever. It's like, he, you know, he, you, know you, you play ball with me, a complete reprobate being Obama, and I, I'm going to turn everything on its ear. You want to be part of this, you're going to help me. And your reward will be you could get this fiefdom, you can have that fiefdom, you can have that fiefdom. We'll divvy up the world because it's just one great revolution of ugliness. With no virtue, there is no beauty. With no beauty, there's no inspiration. With no inspiration, there's no art. You just look at our pop culture today, pop music is another American embarrassment. It's, uh, you know, referring back to Katy Perry at the Super Bowl, that was one of the biggest embarrassments I've ever seen. I mean, no one said anything about it because it was kind of benign. I mean, it wasn't bad, I guess, you know, it's a, the whole Super Bowl, the commercials, the Katy Perry, the, you know, sponsored by Coca-Cola, the corporatocracy, um, the, the whole Homeland Security thing of getting in and, you know, what, what keeping uh, surveillance of every person there at the Super Bowl and the guys, we got to stop terrorism. Uh, is one of the more embarrassing things of all time, of all history, of all humanity, one of the biggest failures of all time, of all people. These people are living failures. And they think they're doing an important job? Of course they don't. They can't be that stupid. I mean, that's, that's what I've had to kind of, you know, been, been grappling with. And that's why I'm talking to you right now. I'm, I am trying to be able to get through my day. Okay. Frankie, it's not to get out of bed, you know, at this point. I mean, I've got projects and things that I guess keep me from being in bed all day, you know, but I, I am trying to, look, I cannot accept a nation that throws out morals, you know, and decency. I, and, and, um, and that, you know, abuses children to, to, so they'll be brought up right, you know, and they'll be tolerant or whatever. I cannot even imagine this, this Tim Cook, um, who's done a very good job except for the Apple Watch. I disagree with launching that. I, don't, I just don't think that's necessary. 
But I mean, it's all part of the prelude to, you know, putting uh, Apple computers in your brain, I guess. Uh, I, I just can't believe how stupid that guy is, to, how, how idiotic his words are. I cannot believe that he's that um, he was mad about legisl the Indiana thing, obviously, and he made said words about we can't leg I mean, you, you see where this is all going, right? The Indiana thing and everything else, the whole thing is going to be a war against Christians, okay? And because they're hateful and intolerant, and eventually that will lead to, I guess, persecution and death. I mean, it already is leading to court martials if someone happens to be a Christian or a libertarian or some, someone who values the Constitution, who values morals, who values honesty. Because remember, today you're, you're nobody unless you lie the whole time. I mean, Obama lies the whole time. He even lied yesterday. Uh, but he lies about everything. Even if he doesn't have to lie, he lies. So that's not the kind of people I want in, as leaders, liars. Criminals, I don't want that. I want good people. I don't want a military filled with reprobate scumbags who are just looking to um, create their own fiefdom and attacking their own people and having no moral compass and no honor. I want my military to have honor, to have respect. Not just going through the motions of saluting the flag and all that and, and saluting each other. I mean, you know, it's, it, until they can get behind closed doors. I don't want that. There was enough of that, you know, but we don't need that. What we need right now is a return of those values that, that uh, you know, that, that made America, you know, win World War II. Now, understand the corruption involved in starting World War II. But when we got into it, the people pulled together and they, they, they accomplished a great goal. The world was in flames, obviously. But you can look at it from the conspiratorial view if you like. That's fine. But there was greatness there in accomplishing it. And there was great sacrifice done on the part of the soldiers. And so there's great honor there. And there's, there's got to be great respect there. When you embrace the Luciferian way, you lose your respect. You lose your honor. You lose your moral compass. You lose your way. And I believe the, uh, any kind of policy that calls for um, court-martialing Christians and stuff... If that's the policy of the U.S. military, and, and, and it, it shifts, it's there one midday, and then they deny it. Um, but then I would say that that, that, that is an outfit that's going to lose. It's, it's based on their moral fiber. They're going to lose because they would have no... Uh, when you don't have uh, morals, you have no courage either. You have no backbone. So you tend to go whichever way the wind blows, and you don't, you don't stick to principles. Well, why should they when the, when the commander-in-chief has n no morals at all? You know, he just basically wants to ram through his some cockamamie fantasy agenda that he has, and he gets all these people to go along with it. Well, I'm doing what Rudyard Kipling said to his son, which is, if you can keep your head while everybody else is losing theirs, um, you, you'll be a man, my son. I'm, I'm summarizing the... The, the great poem, but it was a, a letter to his son, a, a poem to his son. You know, if, if, you can, if you could stay the course when everybody's gone haywire, you know, that's what makes you a man. This is what Rudyard Kipling said. He said that, you know, it's that and that alone that makes you a man. You know, that kind of leadership, that kind of fortitude, that kind of courage, that kind of, um, you know, you know, recognizing that when people are all running evil, the whole crowd is going evil, everyone's throwing all kinds of principles out. You stick with yours. It may be painful. Maybe they'll come against you. Maybe they'll attack you for, for, for not joining in in the insanity. But that's what determines a man. So if that's what a man is, where are the men in the Pentagon? Where are the men in the CIA or the NSA or where are the men in, in Washington? Where are the men? Shrug your shoulders. They've all gone their own way, Lord. They've all gone their own way. Just like in the past has happened, it's so sad, when other civilizations have fallen, and this has fallen. They've all run their own way. None are righteous, Lord, no, not one. It's not allowed. That's a good way to get yourself court-martialed. 
So along with that is going to be the um, camaraderie, morale. I don't know why I'm talking about the military. I guess people tune in. Uh, so, you know, the idea of jumping on the grenade to save the platoon, uh, that's out the window, folks. <laughs> I mean, it, it, the, 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 the leftovers from the past who are still there today, they may have that kind of uh, training and, and, and they may have that kind of um, uh, dedication, you know, and courage. But the way our culture is going, you won't be able to recruit people like that anymore. It'll be like, no, I'll save myself, thank you very much, even if the platoon dies. I mean, that's, that's what's happened. That's, that's, that's the level of where we are. You know, I'll become a Muslim because that suits my career. Yeah, that's, that's the way the wind's blowing, because we've got Obama in the office. And then when there's another president, it, it, it may go another way. I know the Lord is responsible for all this, you know, in a way. I'd be responsible meaning giving man free will and, and he knows what man will choose. But I also believe God intervenes. And I believe that you know, now, Lord, is the time for intervention because and I do believe it's a spotty thing. Um, there's going to be pockets of light and pockets of darkness. And um, when the Lord showed me the nation broken up, I see that it now is it is now broken up. In other words, it may not be officially broken in a with a corporate charter for different territories, but it's broken up and there's no cohesion in America anymore, which I think is by design. But where what, what do Satanists ultimately want to to make for themselves? You know, or Luciferians or Masons or whatever they are, you know. What do they actually have in mind? And the answer is there is nothing in mind. It's, it's, it's self-aggrandizement. If they can, you know, if they can uh, download themselves into machines and then go off to the stars and, and you know, blow up planet Earth and leave the, leave the scumbag humans behind, they'll do that. You know. What do you think Interstellar was about? It was about, you know, decimating the whole human race. If they can create the uh, climate, clim it's funny, they say climate change, then they go out and create climate change through their geoengineering. They go, you see? You see? And then they're the ones creating it. Is that, is that insane or what? And then you go t tell someone about it. And they look at you like you're, you're nuts. You're, you're li literally living in, in an insane asylum with people that know nothing. They know nothing. You know, except that they, 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 they uh, the, the only thing they really know is, um, well, what they thought, and now their paradigm is wrecked, but what they thought was if they sold out to the devil, then they'd have a life. No, a two brute. As soon as you could be stabbed in the back and your life ruined, you know, I got what I wanted out of you, now you go die. Thank you very much. Next, please. That's what you're dealing with. That's what you created. I have, you know, and what do I get for having explained all this over the years? Um, nothing but a kick in the head. That's um, the gratitude you have. You see, once your eyes are opened, you see all this every day. You see the motive behind everything, behind everyone, every day. It's not a conspiratorial way of thinking. You just naturally see you know, you've, you've, your eyes have been opened. You've seen, you know, beyond the Wizard of Oz. You've seen the guy behind the curtain. So from now on, you see everything. And I'm like to these people, do you think, Mr. President, you're really fooling anybody taking a victory lap over the... Do you really think it's that easy? You know, if you want to negotiate with Iran, it's tough. And probably you'd have to, if you were a decent person... You know, a normal person, you, you know, a, you know, a guy with, you know, who doesn't live in Disneyland, a guy who's not in the Truman Show, you would break it off and realize that um, you're going to have to apply sanctions, you know, or whatever it is. But, um, you know, the old, Iranians are old tagglers from, you know, ancient times. You got your head handed to you and you're doing a victory lap. I can't believe it. I don't know that, I, that, I, that every, every passing week we have more embarrassment from the White House. I mean, a lower level 
of, of quality. And to, even when you think it can't get worse than this, he can't get more dumb than this. It can't get that bad. And then he does something really stupid, you know? And I don't know. I would have thought, you know, they can spit it any way they want and say that here's the list of great accomplishments. I can't think of any. And I think the legacy, as far as I'm concerned, it's zero. And no, I'm not going to the George Bush Library either nor the Ronald Reagan one. I, I have not been proud of a president since, I guess, Kennedy. And, um, you know, I'm not even a Democrat. I mean, I'm not a Republican either, but I'm not into it for that, you know, to become a rah-rah, whatever, you know. I certainly could never be a Republican now watching, you know, the, the likes of Boehner and McConnell. I mean, that's so, that's, 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 that's just, that's you got to turn away an embarrassment from that one. You know, in that regard, comparably, Obama comes out better than those two clowns. But the idea that there was some in the news media giving the president a some sort of legacy <clears throat> uh, kudos, I just felt like I need to move somewhere else. I, I need to be in a place where there, you could say yes, no. One plus two equals three. Three, sand on my feet, sun overhead, see the dog run. Now I think I will rest. Maybe we need a little bouncing ball to go over the dialogue, like in an old movie or something, so that people can learn how to communicate again. Because I don't, I don't know that I've that there is any way of communicating with people anymore after what I've been through. Well, what have I been through? Um, just seeing what reality is, thanks to the Lord. The Lord shows me. And uh, I pray to God, and I pray for him to take, you know, these, these horrible things off my shoulders so I don't carry them, so I can forgive the people for truly... They know not what they do. Better words were never spoken, Jesus Christ. Lord, forgive them, for they know not what they do. They know not what they do. That is the very, that's the most accurate thing one could say about it. They really don't know what they do, and they don't know anything. So they're just acting like spinning tops, spinning around. And um, those are your leaders, and you're at their behest. <laughs> so I feel sorry for you. But Lord, forgive them, for they know not what they do. They truly don't know what they're doing. And I'm, I'm going to give up, you know, trying to correct Tim Cook and the rest of the uh, politically correct and tolerant. Um, it's really the gay and being leftist and being gay and being intolerant and being a totalitarian. It's all like, you know, wow, true colors there. It's awful. You know, political correctness at the end of a at barrel of a gun. Death threats to people that have a pizza place. That's just the lowest low of the low. I, I'm, I'd be totally embarrassed. I would back away from the whole thing. If I were in the gay thing, which I wouldn't be, I would just back off. I think people have sex, you know, people can have one form of sex or another. I mean, people experiment around, and I, don't, I think people should keep most of the sex under wraps and not go splitting their souls off a million different ways by having a million different partners. I don't think that's a good idea. Well, maybe when you're young, though, you can't help it. You're going to have that. So there has to be a provision, you know. I mean, there has to be... I certainly, if I were a church, I wouldn't glorify it by condemning it so much because then it just heightens the whole thing and uh, makes it even worse. Well, the church is such a joke, I can't even talk about that. So we need to, you know, move on. Oh, boy, you talk about being betrayed. The, 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 the church system really, I feel, betrayed the people. I mean, just, just raped them over the coals and then turned their back. They just, it just became, you know, I mean, I don't even know what you call it now. It's... That that actually, the church is actually worse than the military in terms of embarrassment. But across the board, you see, the whole satanic movement, 
that we talked about back in the 60s and 70s and everything because we saw it was coming in in 1965 and the Kennedy assassination was really kind of kicking off. I actually, go back to the Cuban Missile Crisis and, you know, and, and, and even, um, you know, Scientology beginning and all that. There was the big satanic kickoff of God is dead, right? And now it's come to fruition. And look, they all jumped on it. And I told you, didn't I tell you, okay, do you need to be starving? Do you need to be, um, you know, war-torn? Do you need to be invaded? Do you need more proof of what I'm saying? Because you just say the word, and you will have more misery than you can imagine. You just keep on like this, world, America, and you will, you will wish that you had. I mean, I understand you want to do your own thing, and you don't want to obey um, God and God's natural laws. You don't want to. You want to do your own thing. <clears throat> okay, well, you'll see where that gets you. But I mean, the next few years, I mean, as, as Brother Thomas was saying, th these are the good times. And I think Kelly was saying the same thing. These are the good times. This is, this is uh, pudding here. But if you need to, then you're going to get your dose. And you're going to prove to yourself that you should not have turned away from God. You will know that and you will, you know, repent or you will die. You know, in your sin and the wages of sin are death. All that's really going on here is the embracing of sin as normal. But you see, if you understand Satanism, and the whole thing about Satanism is this. If you want to know what it is in a nutshell, it's not just a guy, you know, the eyes wide shut, robes, and pomp and circumstance of, of the dark side. With the, I mean, that's a small part of it. But Satanism is this. Okay, a satanic, let me, let me explain what a satanic ritual is. A satanic ritual is getting people to do what they otherwise wouldn't do, either be, uh, through awareness or not awareness. For example, getting people to be cannibals unwittingly, right? Soylent Green. That would be a satanic ritual. You're getting people to do something they would never do, right? You're getting them to do something they would never do and they would never approve if they knew but you've deceived them into eating that soil and green. Turning them into what? Cannibals, which is a spiritual condition. Okay, understood? That's a satanic ritual. Every time they eat the soil and green, it's a satanic ritual of eating the flesh. Okay, may I go on? Oh, they put human uh, tissue in Pepsi? Oh, okay, well, I guess the same old game is going. They don't need to do that. So the only, why would they do that? Because it turns all you people into cannibals. <laughs> and you'll never know till you're dead. <laughs> oh, it gets better. Um, okay, getting you to be politically correct. In other words, a lot of things you would never do, now you do because you don't want to be threatened with not being politically correct with that social pressure. So you cave into it all. And what do you have at the end of the day? You're nothing anymore. You have no point of view. You're, you're basically a, a swept over mind control MK slave who will do whatever he's told. Thank you very much. Next, please. Now, what I'm trying to do today is cope and have a good day. I hope you're doing the same thing. I've got a couple of tracks coming up. I've, I've you know, uh, one called Lovely, Beautiful, The Beautiful and Lovely which is, uh, which is amazingly, uh, you know, done by Trish in a uh, kind of poetic singing fashion, which is very, very kind of artsy in a way, very interesting. But it's about, you know, it's a, it's a poem I wrote, and Trish got into it, and she really nailed it. And, but it's basically about a... Um, uh, i got to get Trish to do more of these. She's really good at that. It's really basically about uh, that I wanted to see the world a certain way. I wanted, to, I wanted to see the world as a fairy tale. I wanted to see that this is a place where, where dreams really can come true. I want to see all that. I want to see the beautiful and lovely, the beautiful and lovely. It's not a religious or spiritual poem. It's just a poem about a, a person who wanted to, to see the beautiful and lovely, you know, coping 
I mean, I, I wrote it right when I was struggling so much with this being awake and aware and still trying to have a good day. And it was just like such a, such a horrid conflict within me that I, I, I had to express it in music. And the, the music also, very haunting music, you know, very, a big kind of piece, like an orchestral piece. So it's, 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 um, you know, it's, uh, you don't, you don't have it right now because the production was very demanding, you know, and I got, uh, you know, I just wanted to, you know, do a good job with it and show you that I, you know, could produce something on that level. And, and so it will be out. Um, I think you can agree with the sentiment, the beautiful and lovely. I want to be, I want beautiful and lovely always. I want the beautiful and lovely. You know, I want the Disneyland. I want the having fun. I mean, it would be great if these people didn't ruin it, but I mean, you know, they did. I guess we all did. But I saw this begin, I mean, I'm of the age where I could tell you I saw the beginnings of this in the 60s. I saw where it started, and now I see where it wound up. And I'm, it's so embarrassing. My God, Lord, I'm so embarrassed to have been part of this. I feel so disgusting and dirty. That I, I repent a hundred times over. I repent a million times, Lord. I am so sorry. I want to apologize for the entire country. But they're so far gone now, there ain't no coming back. You know that. I mean, I guess war is the only way to really... And war comes, you see, whatever we need, we get, you know, history and the dynamic of events that happen on the earth, it's all determined by consciousness, you see. It's, it's all very arbitrary. It's all very, um, it doesn't, you know, again, it's, people don't understand even that, that much. That, that's like, phew, ray over the head, you know. So there's just no way to talk about anything. We just have no conversation and no thought. We just do. We just, we're just penises and vaginas and stomachs wandering around attacking each other. <laughs> yes, the price of decadence. Yes. Well, don't worry. There are enemies out there who'd be, who would love to chop your heads off, okay? And, uh, you know, don't think it's beyond the, the realm of possibility that that might actually start happening. Oh, no, they think they're cleansing the world, you know, for themselves. <laughs> uh, they're going to meet their comeuppance, don't you worry. It's just, they're just at Auschwitz, you know, putting the Jews in the ovens. And, you know, they're Jews themselves. They're going to get theirs. Don't worry. Nobody gets out of this. We just don't get it. There are rules, okay? There are rules. And... If there are natural laws, you know, God's laws of, of you know, good, you know, and, and their distribution. I mean, he's going to snap this thing back to equilibrium. It kills all of us. It's just a natural law. And, you know, um, Satan would love to see as many people dead as possible, of course. Or if you like Lucifer, if you like the fallen angels, the people that the military industrial complex is in bed with, they want to see this whole thing destroyed. They want to bring in machines, so that'll kill it off completely. Even Warren Buffett, oh, such a, a mensch, isn't he? Warren Buffett is out there saying machines will determine whether you're going to live or die. I'm like, I, I, um, I see how he just caves to anything, so he's already caved to that idea. He's, he's do. Oh, don't worry. He's a cheerleader for it. He's, he's all for it. Ah, just because he's a good investor doesn't mean he's, he's, a, um, could teach a moral philosophy. Shall I put it that way? Doesn't mean he has integrity in, in, in his person. I've seen him slip slide around with Gates. You know, the two of them uh, seem to be really determined to uh, create hell on earth. I think for everyone else except themselves.
Okay, I want to get off this topic now. I, I'm sorry. I struggled with it. I've, I've wasted, you know, a lot of precious time here dealing with it when I probably shouldn't be. And let's see where I'm at now. An hour. Okay, an hour and nine minutes to get through this. Well, you, thank you. You're being my therapy for me. I, I, I really don't want to be bummed out every day, and I don't want to see the worst of humanity every day. I like to think there is going to be decorum and honor in the military, but you can't outlaw God, or you can never win another war. I mean, you can win in the short term, maybe. You don't think you're winning, but you don't, you don't win. It's, 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 um, it's built into the, it's, it's baked into the cake that you don't win. You fight yourselves. It's every man for, oh, never mind. Okay. Okay, so I'm just trying to deal with all that, watching it all happen across the board from the chemtrails and the drought creation and the dumbasses in California who don't have a clue what's going on. I ask them, have you ever looked up, people? Don't you know? <laughs> they don't. <laughs> it's just God's punishing them. That's, that's what, and, and man is coming in. We're going to have an emergency. You know, the next step is I'm just wondering when the uh, um, property relocating starts and the riots start. I mean, you know, everything they can do to, to do evil, they're doing to the people. And the people are sitting there like, you know, blaming someone else. It's like the people that aren't gay. Everyone should be gay and then we'll all be happy. We all need to be gay Muslims. Oh, no, we can't be because Muslims kill gays. Oh, Oh, there's a now there's a there's a conflict we can't solve. Uh, I guess, huh? I guess we're pretty darn ignorant, right? Uh, or we couldn't get to this point of misunderstanding. No moral compass. You don't need. Well, let me see if I can get back here. Okay. The end of all things is near, therefore be alert and be sober, of sober mind, so that you may pray. Okay? So that you may pray. This is 1 Peter 4, 7. The end of all things is near, waiting for Godot. End times programming. Armageddon, World War Three. So Matthew Henry's commentary goes something like this. The destruction of the Jewish church and nation foretold by our Savior was very near, and the speedy approach of death and judgment concerns all, to which these words naturally lead our minds. Our approaching end is a powerful argument to make us sober in all worldly matters and earnest in religion. There are so many things amiss in all that unless love covers, excuses, and forgives in others, the mistakes and faults for which everyone needs the forbearance of others, Satan will prevail and stir up divisions and discords. But we are not to suppose that charity will cover or make uh, amends for the sins of those who exercise it, so as to induce God to forgive them. The nature of a Christian's work, which is uh, a high work and hard work, the goodness of the master and the excellence of his reward, all require that our endeavors should be serious and earnest, and that in all duties of services in life, we should aim at the glory of God as the chief end. Uh, and he says, he is a miserable, unsettled wretch who cleaves to himself and forgets God. He is only perplexed about his, about his credit and gain and base ends, which are often broken and which, when he attains, both he and they must shortly perish together but he who has given up himself and his all to God may say confidently that the Lord is, is his portion and nothing but the glory through Jesus Christ is solid and lasting that abideth forever. Well, I have to say amen to that. I mean, that was you know, written a long time ago, but I mean, that's basically, um, you know, the end of all things is near. Well, the end is always near. I mean, there's no guarantee. So we should live our lives, obviously, as if the end is tomorrow. And to do those things and to lead our lives in such a way that, that we can say, look, God is my, he is my, um, he is my all in all. He is my provision. He is my everything. 
and I've done what I could do, you know, to, to, to stay the course and to, to, to uh, put forth the truth so that we might walk in freedom and, you know, it may end tomorrow. But if it does, I, I, I know that God is in everything and my faith in Jesus Christ and that name above all other names because my faith in him is what endures, you know. As long as I know God is all in all, then I live forever in that knowledge because there is no death for me because God is, is life and all in all and I'm in him and he's in me. So the body may pass, but I, you know, the, it all sticks. It's all, you know, and so all the things that happen to me in life are all good because he is my provision. So it's not like I achieve something and then it fleets away. Everything is now, now, now in eternal kingdom. So it's all, it's all, whatever there is for that today's meat is going to be, that's, that's what we focus on. We're not going to worry about tomorrow and we're not going to worry about, you know, what we have or don't have because God is our provision. You know, the end is always an error. Um, your own life could end. I mean, the end is always right around the corner. So if we have God as our meat and our provision and our, and our, um, and our all in all and our glory and our faith, then nothing is impossible for us to do in regards to spreading the truth and to doing the right thing because we know that all these things have eternal consequences. So because we're in eternity and because we have God and we have Christ, because we have inherited all things and all things are new. We can give it up. We can just go ahead and work for the glory of God and do for his glory. And I think that's what gets me through the day. Also, the other part of that commentary, you know, the end is near, we should pray. Well, I pray for all the people who are steeped in ignorance, for all the people that Jesus would say to, forgive them, Lord, for they don't know what they do. For all the people about to perish because of the fact that they know not what they do. For the people who believe that there are no consequences for the way they behave. For the people that have no moral compass because it was all a bogus thing anyway, so they threw it out. So therefore, they, they're, they're just spinning tops, you know, um, with razor blades, uh, plowing into anyone they see and, and cutting them to shreds. At that point, we must forgive them all because they're all going to step on your toes and they're all going to accuse you of being what something, you know. And we see them attacking innocent Christians who mean them no harm, and it's, it's terrible. But we must forgive them because they know not what they do in the hopes that, that they would wake up. In Jesus' name, amen in the hopes that they would repent and, and be able to uh, make a, a, a contribution to the world, to the, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the benefit of other people. And, you know, I'll say it, I'll, I'll go the extra mile here and say, too, I have, um, you know, I pray for all the people, even if I may not be spending time with people that have um, gone to a certain level, okay? I may not be spending a lot of time, but my door is always open if, in case it, if there's a repentance. And um, you can have whatever. You know, I'll give you the shirt off my back. But I may not let you in if, 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 if it's a, a demonic thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work for the betterment of that person by praying for them. Because, see, I already forgive them. I already forgive them. I forgive them all. I understand the world's very tough and they weren't strong, and they succumbed to it. I understand that. But those of us who have not succumbed, we, we need to, um, you know, throw them life rafts. Well, I can't really let in. If, if someone's going to be demonic, and then they're going to lie, and they're, they're going to see the spirit in me, they're going to be at war. I just, you know, but I'm not going to give up on that person. You know, maybe one day the Lord will say, bring them all in, you know, and then maybe there'll be a mass cleansing. I don't know. 
I don't have that kind of strength, though. I mean, the Lord will dictate what he wants me to do. Right now, he doesn't want me to bring them in because um, I tend to get very bogged down with that sort of thing. I tend to um, lose lose my you know way by being uh, depressed and I, I you know it's it's like it's like when you look at you know things like the presidency the the Congress the military the you know various institutions you know the the, the nefarious plans against human and the and the lack of respect toward God you know it gets you very very sad. That there's no reverence for life. There's no reverence for the Lord. There's no reverence, no wonder. It's just petty little children in a sandbox throwing their crap at each other. And I feel really, really bad about that. You know, I mean, not just from the embarrassment, but just I feel terrible about that. I don't know what it is, that, you know, the only way that this thing changes is, is if they all repent, if, they, if we turn back to God collectively. But I, I'm, I'm not sure that's going to happen because, you know, most of them believe that Satan's going to pay, you know, and they don't believe he's just there as a snare. And he's just there as a snare. I mean, what can I do about it? He's just there as um, a, he, he was created by God to do just what he's doing. So it still all goes back to God every time. Um, anyway, regarding the end times mind control, uh, a lot of what you see happening, you know, the idea of an Armageddon, World War Three, uh, the, the whole thing about the, uh, the Gog Magog and the Jews and all this stuff, you know, I know this is going to sound crazy, but I mean, you know, they're setting that up. Plus I believe they're going to have some kind of fake you know, they'll have a World War III followed by this return of something, some alien, and call that Jesus. And, you know, it'll be so good, the whole world will fall for it. And uh, because they're looking for an external kind of comic book, you know, revelation to occur. And because of that, they can be duped. And I believe that, the, you know, something along those lines, like, I mean, I can't prove it, but something along those lines of a, of a return of Christ that's a... Uh, like some alien um, satanic being or even Satan in some way or a, some kind of lizard or something comes in with the ability to heal and to make prosperous and to, and everyone will be so seduced and they'll all be there. Um, you couldn't pull all that off without, you know, without end times mind control programming, rapture programming, all this exterior MK stuff. People have a hard time believing that, you know, we're here God hasn't forsaken us. He's, you know, within us. But, but they have a hard time attributing to God the, the whole creation. They just say that God can only create what's good. He can't create evil. He, he, he would not create light and dark, just light. And, you know, when you're here, you're really not going anywhere. I mean, you're here. You know, and we're, we're, we're going to, you're going to go through it uh, for whatever it is. Um, but anyway, the, the, the whole MK thing is very strong and, you know, you know, maybe they won't. I mean, since there's a dwindling amount of Christians, you know, maybe they will forego that prophecy and go jump on another one. But, you know, end times programming, whether it's Christian or any kind of uh, end times programming, uh, is always very enticing to people. And so, you know, don't think it isn't being used. Um, you know, my relationship with God can only be an internal one. It, it cannot be an external one. Therefore, whatever they say about the end times or not end times, it's really not my business. I don't care what happens with the end times. If I have the Lord truly, then I just go day to day anyway. And if they're going to pull the rug out from under me, so be it. Go ahead. I think at this point, um, us all dying of ripe old age and natural causes, I mean, I hope that happens, but it, it, it just, it, you know, the, I don't like being betrayed by my own people. I wish we were a nation, not a divided nation with, you know, the government against the people and, and all that. I just, I wish 
that we would be have unity together. But um, I just don't think it's in man's nature. I think our nature is to destroy each other. And um, certain politicians and others have fanned the flames of that to get us to have division, discord, distrust amongst each other and to vehemently attack one another in a kind of like a way to, to kill each other off. And I think that plays into their agenda and I think that's another thing they're doing. I feel so bad that people are all manipulated but they, the only way they could understand to get out of that would be if they know there's a greater plan or if they know it's not about them somehow, it's about something else. And then they would want to find out what that is. But um, with political correctness and totalitarianism and with, with the specter of depopulation uh, as a goal, stated goal of you know, various people of power, I'd say the odds on not getting into a war are pretty much slim and none. I mean, it, 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 it just seems like it's all going that way. I mean, for now, World War III was, you know, remember a few days ago, it was like, it's, it's, it, you know, you were ducking already. And then it was swept off the table. Remember I said, oh, God could pull it. You know, but I don't know how much longer, because he's had to pull it how many times now? Let's see, one, two, three, four, like five times. You know, nuclear, whatever, false flags with nuclear, you know, all kinds of stuff to get this party started. And thank, thank you, Lord. Thank God. I pray that you give this place a chance because like you said, Lord, there's a number of good people here, you know, enough, far more than the situation where things have been destroyed before, enough so that you would intercede and intervene on our behalf, that you would help us, Lord. And I think I'm going to leave it right there. I don't know I, if the, rat, the, the rant helps you or hurts you. I, I just, you know, I, I have tried to cope with, you know, this the best I can. I feel at peace right now. And I feel definitely, you know, that I want to uh, produce, you know, works and music and things that, that deal with this, that grapple with all this. And that's why I'm, you know, I said the things I said today because I, I can't be the only one. I mean, I know a lot of you are awake. And it must be terribly hard for you to live through each day, knowing what you know and seeing them do exactly what you predicted they're going to do and then watching them do it right on cue, knowing they're all lying about it, knowing that you're the target it, that they're, they're aiming for. And it's just, it must be terrible to feel like everywhere you look, there's another war against you or war against people like you, you know. Everywhere you look, they're, they're, they're smiling and glad-handing while doing you in and stabbing you in the back. It must be terrible to wake up in this nightmare. And I'm telling you, it's all part of judgment of God. You know, Those people, the, the people you think are the elites and above it, they're not. They're suffering. It's not enough for them to run everything or to own everything. They're unhappy people. Trust that. Anyway, I love you and I'm praying for you and I'm praying for them. I pray for Obama. I pray for the Congress. I pray for everybody that I have criticized. I'm going to back it up. It's, I have to expose it, but then I'm going to pray for it. I forgive all. I have total tolerance, unlike um, a lot of people. I'm not calling myself a sex act. So that's the first step toward tolerance. I'm not going to label. I'm a human being. I'm not a sex act. It, whatever uh, sex that I have done in the past or not done... You know, it's basically none of your business, but I, I, I pointed out a little bit of it just to inform you that um, of a few things, you know. But still, um, it's not my life. It's a particular part of my biology. That's it. It's not my politics. It's not my God. It's not my life. It's, a, it's an aspect of uh, reproduction and desire for pleasure and so forth, but it's not, it's absolutely not my life. A food's not my life. You know, nothing is, my, the only thing that can be a life is God, you know. It, it can't be materialism because that makes people depressed. Right? Because all the pleasures are fleeting. 
No sooner, you know, if you're a sex act um, at posing as a human, no sooner do you gratify yourselves as you feel sorrow and emptiness right after. You know, it's just like, and then, then you got to go do it again, I guess, and do it again and again and again. You know, do it a million times. Or those people who try to make that part of the system of commerce. It's like, oh, okay. But it, can all, it all leads to ennui. And ennui is a state of, like, it's, it's worse than depression. It's a state of, uh, of misery over the world through, you know, through like the doldrums of the world or through when it all becomes so mundane, it becomes ennui. You know, when it all becomes so world wearying is ennui, right? You're world weary. You're on, you have ennui. And most of the elites, because they've been there, done that, they've had every pleasure imaginable. They've had every material thing imaginable. They have on you we. Well, maybe they need a war to, to give them something to watch, but in, in general, it's... I found it interesting about this Getty kid being uh, dead. I mean, what I found interesting was not him wanting up dead. I didn't find that interesting. I'm sorry for, for him and his family. I, I uh, was just baffled about the reporting, where they reported it was some kind of this or that, when the real reporting was that the person that um, he had filed a restraining order against and they've been fighting and the police have been there a bunch of times, she was the one that called in the body and he was found with, um, uh, that it was blunt force trauma to the rectum that killed him and he was lying in a pool of blood and the news media wouldn't report it. And I just felt like, wow, wow. I, I'm embarrassed at the American news media. I mean, I, I can tell you this right now. The kind, the quality of, of, uh, of human that signs up for this stuff or that, that, that goes, you know, or the indoctrination they go through, whatever it is that, that makes them into such liars and such, such um, unethical people. I, I, I can't even imagine. When I saw the way that that Brian Williams guy was lying about being shot down in the helicopter and all these stories, I was, I, 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 I couldn't believe it. He's a crazy man. And they, they let him, wow, be a pillar of society. I, I, I don't understand, folks. I don't understand at all. You know, I see so much of this kind of stuff in those inner circles, in those, in those connected realms that I feel that, what is it, they atrophy in their character because everything is so easy because they did what the Eagles said and they took it easy. Is that what it is, taking it easy? You just kind of like go with Daddy Satan and float downstream, it's all good? Is that it? Really? See, for me, because I tend to go to, to, to sink into, um, you know, depression, introspection, or pain, recalling incidents from the past where people were mean and, you know, or did things or whatever, you know, just pain in general, you know, just things don't go right. You know, it, then, then pulling myself out of that, you know, by trusting the Lord, knowing he's there. I go through a struggle to hang in with the Lord, a struggle to, to hang in there. Yeah, I had to pull myself up into that, into that. I got to get my focus back on him. I've got to, you know, just go look at the Psalms. And you know, I know I said I was going to go away a second ago, but I think we need to really go into the Psalms right now. You know, I we don't want to just talk about it. Um, I don't want that one. I want I want another one. How come I can't? I don't want that one. I want. Hmm. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock. Remember that song Kelly and I did. Uh, and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. The sorrows of death compassed me and the floods of the ungodly men made me afraid. The sorrows of hell compassed me about and the snares of death prevented me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple and my cry came before him even into his ears. And then the earth shook and trembled. Foundations also the hills moved and were shaken 
because he was wroth. There went up smoke out of his nostrils and a fire out of his mouth devoured. Coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also and came down and darkness was under his feet. And he rode upon a cherub and did fly. And yea, he did fly upon the wings of the wind. He made darkness his secret place. His pavilion round about him were dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. At the brightness that was before him, his thick, the, his thick clouds passed and hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord also thundered in the heavens and the highest uh, gave his voice, hailstones and coals of fire. Yea, he sent out his arrows and scattered them and he shot out lightnings and discomfited them. When the, the channels of waters were seen and the foundations of the world were discovered by thy rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of the breath of thy nostrils, he sent out from above, he took me, he drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hated me, for they were also too strong for me. They prevented me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was uh, my stay. He brought me forth also into a large place and delivered me because he delighted in me. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanliness of my hands, uh, hath he recompensed me. For I have kept the ways of the Lord, and I have not wickedly departed from my God, for all his judgments were before me, and I did not put away his statutes from me. I was also upright before him, and I kept myself from mine iniquity. Therefore hath the Lord recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanliness of my hands in his eyesight. With the merciful, with the merciful thou wilt show thyself merciful. With the upright man wilt thou show thyself upright. With the pure wilt thou show thyself pure, and with the froward wilt thou show thyself froward. For thou wilt save the afflicted people, but will bring down the high looks. Remember before, that which is low will be brought up, but that which is high will be brought low. For thou wilt light, wilt light my candle, the Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. For by thee I have run through a troop, and by my God I have leapt over a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all those who trust in him. For who is God save the Lord? And who is a rock save our God? It is God that girdeth me with strength and maketh my way perfect. He maketh my feet like hinds feet and sitteth, sitteth me upon the high places. He teaches my hands to war so that a bow of steel is broken in mine arms. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation and thy right hand hath holden me up and thy gentleness hath made me great. Thou hast enlarged my steps under me that my feet did not slip. I have per pursued mine enemies and overtaken them. Neither did I turn again till they were finally consumed. I have wounded them that were not able to rise, they are fallen under my feet. For thou hast girded me up with strength into the battle, thou hast subdued under me those that rose up against me. Thou hast also given me the necks of mine enemies, I might destroy them that hate me. They cried, but there was none to save them, even under the Lord, but he answered them not. Then I did beat them, small as the dust before the wind, and I did cast them as the dirt in the streets. Thou hast delivered me from the strivings of the people. Thou hast made me the head of the heathen. The head thou hast made me the head of the heathen. Of, of the heathen, a people whom I have not known shall serve me. As soon as they hear of me, they shall obey me. The strangers shall submit themselves to me. The strangers shall fade away and be afraid out of their own places. The Lord liveth, and he bless, blessed, and blessed be my rock, and let the Lord of my salvation be exalted. It is God that avengeth me, and subdue the people under me. He delivereth me from mine enemies, yea, thou liftest me up above those that rise up against me. Thou hast delivered me from the violent man. 
Therefore will I give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the heathen, and sing praises unto mine, thy name. Great deliverance giveth he to his king, and showeth mercy to his anointed, to David, and to his seed forevermore. And you can see how embattled. I, I read the whole thing because I just felt it was just nothing but encouragement. And the thing is, is, you know, embattled as David was, and the enemy is so fierce. And he just knew, you could see the confidence in that writing. He just understood that God delivered the next of them. God delivered the victory. God, God shielded uh, him. God protected him. God built him up. God was the rock of his salvation. God, you know, right? I said, well, I, think, I thought you need Jesus for salvation. Well, you do. But Yeshua is God saves, right? I wouldn't look at it that way. I would just look at it as like, you got to go with God, you know, and, 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 and God will show you Jesus and the rest of it. Look, you just, that's where the victory is, and that's where the victory in battle and the victory over the mumblers and complainers and the people with all these different um, agendas, like, like, you know, plans within plans of how to get to us, how to hurt us, how to put us down. Not if the Lord doesn't allow it. Not if you pray about it. Look at that nuclear war. Just boom, gone. Oh, it'll come back. Don't worry. But, I mean, there it was. It was like right at, right at the precipice. Boom, gone. Remember? Ukraine, World War Three, the big fight, NATO, Russian troops, you know, NATO driving tanks, and we've got all this equipment on the Russian border, blah, 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 all that. Well, I'm not saying it's not going on, but it was right at the brink of, you know, someone will lob one, NATO, boom, next thing you know, right, uh, it's, you know, global, blah, blah, everything goes up, right? People were like, a brace for that. I'm not saying it won't come back. If they keep trying to you know, get this party started, they want to get this party started. I mean, they want to kill you all. You know, they, they're, well, you elected them, you pay them, but then they kill you. You know, it's, it's amazing. Once you get a guy like Obama in office, I mean, you know, it's, it's screw the people. He's, he's got his, it's just terrible. And uh, I'm going to, I don't want to give him all the credit because, I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of people responsible for this, this, this moral um, decline and this this uh, cultural decline and this this the, the the horror that they've befallen people. It's just, it's you know I, I I feel so sorry for children who are looking up to them like like they're leaders. You know these these people are worse than the children. You know most of the leaders today, and I'm just amazed that you know at the lack of backbone. Well, a guy like Ted Cruz has backbone. He stands up and says something. But, I mean, you know, they, then they laugh at him and mock him. I, 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 this is just not some place I can relate to. You know, I mean, I'm, I, I, I kind of, well, I'll put it in my poetry. And, you know, I think now the podcast and the music and everything is just one big form of therapy, of, of trying to cope, you know, trying to understand what I'm seeing trying to live with the disappointment of, of what people have done here, and especially in leadership positions. It, it, just one little thing. I canceled a trip to California because I didn't think I could handle people not looking up. I can't handle people not, not acting like they're victims of a drought, not pointing the finger where it belongs. So I just avoid it because I, I just can't handle that kind of that level. I may get better in the future and go back out to California, but right now I have no plans for it because I cannot imagine that they would just sit there and, and you know, be, have their property confiscated or have a state of emergency or however, however this thing leads, that they would just go along with it. I, I, I just can't believe it. That that many people would just go ahead and Turn over their property. What are they going to? What are they going to do? You know, if they run out of water, then they can't stay in their properties, right? So, what are they going to do? For the first time in my life, I don't, you know, feel secure in my property. I feel like, you know, that 
I may technically own it on paper, you know, and I, you know, pay for it and I pay the taxes and everything, but I feel like, you know, they made me feel like I don't even own anything. I'm, 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 you know, not even my own person. I'm just, just kind of like a refugee almost. And I, you know, if I think about the, the pop music people, I, f I feel very embarrassed and very sad. And then I think about the, um, the rock people that, you know, they, they keep trying to have albums out and stuff, how they don't talk about anything, you know, they, they, they just brain dead morons. I mean, I love music, but I'm not hearing anything that contributes to the, the healing of this nation or the healing of the world or anything that's just challenging. It could be very challenging, all kinds of, of, of ways of doing it, including very cool ways. But I just, you know, a couple of bands, I guess, but just n nothing that's going to make any difference. Not even close. And with that, I bid you shalom. We'll, we'll, we'll see you next time. I'm, I'm, I say cheer up, okay? Cheer up. You know, you can pray, and prayer changes things. And that's, we all have to become super prayer warriors right now. In Jesus, I bid you shalom.